Welcome everyone to Visionary Psychics. I'm Sarah Wiseman and I'm here with our Visionary Psychic, Leon Shoemake. Leon, welcome to uh, this series that we're doing. Welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, I don't even recall actually how we met, but we've known each other a little while now and um, and it's just been fascinating to see how you receive the psychic and intuitive information that you do. It kind of seems to just kind of pop out of nowhere, like you just got it sort of. And I wondered if you could just tell a little bit about when you started to notice, oh, this thing is happening. Like, does everyone have this? No, <laughs> I'm having this. What was that like for you? And that when? How old were you when that started? Oh my goodness. Well, it's almost exactly the way that you said it. It's always happened where I would get, I, I'm largely clairvoyant. That's probably my, my primary, but I would just like get images or even thoughts, just like things that were going on, kind of seeing things that were happening that maybe other folks don't. And it would come in very strange ways. And until I started getting involved, literally we met, I took one of your courses um, one of the self-study courses. And then that led to the intro to psychic piece. And that's, that's how we met. But it wasn't until then that I started seeing these things that I've been always seeing and hearing and understanding, they have some meaning, some, some deeper meaning. When you start putting that out and it gets validated in a way, it's like, wow, I've always been doing this. I just didn't realize it. It's really, it's really interesting. Yeah. It's almost like, and I felt the same. It's almost like we had this language that we could track on or understand but we didn't know it was a language we just thought it was kind of random or just luck or and then as you kind of start learning like oh this is how this vision is going to show up this is how you can get the next vision um one thing that surprised me about you always is like i'm kind of a big picture psychic like i get the general drift of where things are going but you sometimes get like really exact detail and it, what has that been like for you or how do you figure how does that show up for you you know that's really interesting because that's what helped give me some confidence in this if i can get something that's very very precise and it may not come out as something precise it may be an image Mm -hmm. um, I remember I was doing a reading for someone and I saw this image of a dinosaur wearing a crown. What the heck is that? <laughs> right. but I interpreted that as this person was holding on to something, some belief or some, or, or some past event that was no longer relevant. A dinosaur is extinct and it has this crown, so it's glorifying it. So I put that out there to the person and boom, yeah, absolutely. That's right on. So when I see weird things like that, I just kind of let it go and, and, and see, see what's happening. There's, I just figured there's always a reason why I'm receiving mm -hmm. these things, you know, in the context of, of reading someone. So I put it out there and when it's right on like that, it's right on. It could be very, very nitpicky, detail -y like that sometimes. Yeah. Um, when you are, I have a lot of questions for you actually, but one thing I've, I've been talking to some of the other visionary psychs that, psychics that you also know some of them. And what I've been kind of noticing lately is like a lot of us have, like we're in our heads a lot doing this kind of work and then a lot of us have like physical practices that are almost acting like a clearing method and like i know like one person said that she was doing a lot of yoga that was like she just cleared it all i'm on my little 30 year old bike all the time <laughs> it's so old so old but so good um yeah, yeah. and uh and you, you have a lot of things like you're just continually sort of moving your body. How does that affect receiving or clearing? Or what is that? How does that add to or balance this practice for you? Yeah, it's really so all connected. So I, I started running a few years ago before I started getting involved in, in this. Um, I just found that I love to be outdoors and mm -hmm. just running out. I live close to a place called Balboa Park in San Diego. It's gorgeous trees everywhere. And just being aware of the feelings that I get when I'm out there in nature. And I identified a particular group of trees. It's like a family of trees that when I go by there, it's just the energy is different and just realizing how it's all connected like that. So even running something as mundane as that is something where I can connect in certain ways in certain parts of the park. Um, and then I've, I've just always exercised. And that's, that's a way also to kind of 
you know, let go and allow at the same time. Yeah. So I'm just finding that any of the activities that I've been engaging in for years and years also have this other aspect to them where you're, you just realize that you're connected. So running in particular, when I'm, when I'm out there in nature, I seem to receive a lot of things in that format. Yeah, and I think running, um, or like, I'm not a runner, but like biking and running, you're kind of going forward, and then a lot of things are coming past you very quickly, and it creates like a trance state, or it's rhythmic, you know, and, and so we can sit in trance in our room, or we can be outside in trance, and like, that is um, helping expand the practice of receiving information is kind of what I think, especially in nature. I think that's right what you said about nature. I was in, um, I think it was Lowe's yesterday, just looking for a Christmas decor for my mom. And <laughs> so I was in that Christmas section and uh, all the lights flashing in the giant Santas and so forth. And um, then I walked over to the plant section and it was just like, ah, oh, what a relief of that nature kind of that this sort of energetic balance from the super, you know, electronic balance way to the natural way. And so if you're getting outside a lot too, you're sort of bathing in that natural energy field. I'm not sure what we'd even call it. So. Yeah, that, that's interesting because I've been working on my yard for the past few months. It's a major project. I just uh -huh. cleared everything that's back there. I had a bunch of plants and random things back there. So I just cleared everything. I had a tree cut down and just start with this clean slate. But it took like months to do that, like a couple hours on the weekend. But like every time I'm out there, just like, I don't need this plant anymore. So I'm gonna remove it. You know, you dig it out and do all kinds of stuff. And now I have it where it's just like all plastic laid down to get rid of the lawn. And I have this clean slate. And something about that was therapeutic, just removing the things that don't belong there anymore and starting yeah. to visualize what it could look like. I did realize how large my yard is and how many possibilities there are for things. So just that whole process out there, something that would seem horrible out there working in the sun week after week, but it's like this process of clearing and then allowing something new to come in. So it's been really, really neat. Yeah, what a metaphor for your clients, like if they're, or for all of us, like if we're concerned, you know, we're holding on to the past, like the dinosaur with the crown that you mentioned, and then you realize, the field of possibilities is completely open, like yes. each of us can create. Right. Um, when you work with people, so sometimes you get the departed, is that correct? Is that yes. what happens? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 What, what do they usually have? <laughs> I don't get the departed as much. What do they usually have to say or what have you noticed about that? It's really interesting. Um, I do the pre-readings that we talked about in class, and that has been absolutely so valuable, that just getting those guiding visions ahead of time. And for whatever reason, a lot of the times, that's when departed come to me. When I'm focusing in on the person before I've talked to them at all, I will get that. I will, I will see somebody and there'll be some type of message or some type of word or some type of item or they're wearing pink lipstick that's very pronounced and I can communicate that to the person. So it's like they kind of come in not even in real time all the time for me, but sometimes it's just part of the guiding vision for this is something for this person who I'm going to read for. And uh, that happened to me spontaneously in terms of uh, mediumship. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it's another one of those things that's kind of been happening because sometimes I just see faces <laughs> you know, before yeah. I even got it. I, I would just see people who I don't know. And sometimes yeah. they would clearly be showing me something. And once I had a clear audience, a message to go along with the space that I saw. Someone said, please help me speak to my cousin. I had no idea who that person was, but for whatever reason, whatever channel I was on at the time, it, it was allowing this person to come in. So, so now when I'm doing a, a reading, if someone comes in uh, live, it's, a, it's much easier for me to, number one, accept that I'm communicating with someone mm -hmm. like that, which took a hurt, was a hurdle for me, frankly, uh, yeah. to, to, to get in that space where I can say, this is, this is really happening. But when someone, when it connects to someone and yeah. it's a message that, you know, that they needed to hear and just the feeling of them of either relief or happiness or joy, whatever that is, that that message was, was for them. That's what I love about this so much. Just, just that making that connection, you know, I'm a vessel. So it came through me to them mm -hmm. and for them. And, and that, that's what makes it. So mediumship in particular 
Um, I'm really finding a fascination with that. I'm still learning. I say that up front. I'm still learning and developing and growing with every client, with every reading, with every meditation, for sure. But that's something that I, I, I'm, I'm really finding that I enjoy. Well, I think that's exactly right. This idea of um, just because we do this work doesn't mean we have all the answers. We're just people doing our lives. Um, and so often when people come, like if you're doing someone comes and you have a mediumship experience with their departed and them and this, you know, heart opening happens. And it's like, we're not unaffected. That's a blessing for you too. Like we're always learning by the universe coming in. Like um, it's the you and the client and the universe. Like it's a, it's a triangle as yes. opposed to just you and the client and a bunch of departed that right, <laughs> wandered right. in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, do you have things with, um, I just wonder, cause I'm not, I'm not the most strong medium or I don't focus on that. I'm more with the guides, but I have noticed lately, a lot of people are animal communicators. Is that something that you have or um, I, I just, yeah. I just not, not so much or. Yeah, I haven't experienced that um, mm -hmm. other than like I see a face sometimes, sometimes I'll see an animal. So maybe, maybe that happens yeah. too, but in terms of never in a reading have I, you know, tapped into an entity as an animal that I thought was for the person. Maybe that's coming. I don't know, but uh, yeah. That's a, you, not yet. yeah, you might. Um, Cause what I kind of noticed is like things started opening and the more I practice, like more parts open, like mediumship isn't my focus, but like animal stuff started to happen or nature stuff or um, past lives. Like some people are really good at past lives. So we don't have to have, we don't have to tick all the boxes. It's completely unimportant. It's just like, but just maybe, I just know that more, more is always coming, which is kind of shocking because I think there's kind of a lot already. But um, when you get somebody that, well, two things. One, there's been so much pain the last couple years. I mean, there's always pain, but it's been expand, you know, heightened. Um, and then what do you do when you get somebody like you see it so clearly, like you got it, the departed are all in agreement with you. And then the person's kind of resistant. How do you kind of work through that with that client? Yeah, that, that's, that's a great question. That takes me right back to my teaching. I was a, I was a high school English teacher in a, in a previous life. Uh, well, this lifetime, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, and, and then the clients are really the students and, you know, same thing. I have information for them that they're going to need and they may be resistant to it. So uh, I have to look at it in really a couple of ways. One is that um, the process of delivering the information, delivering the message that that's serving my purpose to get it to them. They have the ability to do what they want with it, but in terms of trying to get them to that place where they see that it's valuable, sometimes I'll use questioning with them. Um, I'll, I'll go into, so how does that feel? When we talk about that, how does that feel? And not even needing a response myself to that, but for them to just go through that process of absorbing it a little bit, even just yeah. as my students, I've, I may never see them blossom. <laughs> And, you know, somewhere down the road, what I said or what was presented to them may have more meaning to them than in that moment. So it's not for me in the moment. It's, that's not even the thing. It's relaying the information and doing some things just to get them to absorb it on, a, on some level at that moment. Then they'll think about it, hopefully. And then maybe it makes more sense down the road. So I have to let go of the outcome in the moment that there's going to be a light bulb that goes off and they're going to say that's the most profound thing I've ever heard. I'm not expecting that. And uh, I'm just trying to relay the message to them and come up with ways. I think that's part of my job is to come up with mm -hmm. ways to get them to attach to it a little bit more in, in, in the moment. And then of course it's, it's theirs to do with as, as they, as they choose. I think that's exactly right. Like it's, if we just say, Oh, I see this, this, and this, thank you. It, it's a, that's a horrible reading. Um, a reading is to help the person not only get, hear the information but start to process it and i really love that idea of um like if you were teaching high schoolers you accept like they're young you know they have a lot of growth and that is true i find 
if a person's 90, they're still have a lot of growth, like a lot of things in a lifetime, especially like say you're 90, maybe you've looked at these five things, but you've never looked at these three other things and just opening up the pieces that are yet to be processed or yet to be finished is super useful. Um, I find, I don't know if you've, <laughs> maybe it's just me, but I find like sometimes the readings that I hate the most that are just like not what I want to hear. And those are the best because they start to get me thinking about, well, what if that were, what if that was correct? No, it's not correct. But what if it were correct? No, it's not correct. <laughs> but what if? And then just kind of like letting that opening come from hearing something different than what I'm always thinking every single you know minute of the day. This one track. Yeah. yeah. No. That, well. Well said. Yeah. And yeah. and I I had actually I had a, a written reading. I don't do a lot of those, but I I, I allow them. And and it was. For whatever reason, sometimes you get a lot of relationship issues. What does this person think of yeah. me? So um, when I do my pre-read, I'm getting much broader than that. For right. Sure. So, right. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll obviously I'll answer the question, you know, to the extent that I can. And then, but then I always want to give more than that. So I'll I'll layer in some questions, maybe. So I want you to think about what you what what would you like in an ideal relationship? And this is obviously it's not interactive because it's written, but I just want the person to take this with them. What would you like in that? Think about a time when you were really ha happy. Everything was really clicking. What did that feel like? And I want you to lean into what that felt like. And yeah. I'm trying to get that contrast between they're worried about what this person over here is thinking about them versus going into themselves in terms of what they need, what they require, what makes them happy. And again, same what we were saying before, if I can just draw that so they, they're going to read it because it's a written thing. So I, I kind of have an advantage there. I know they're going to look at it. <laughs> you know, they can't yeah. ignore it. Um, so something to go beyond um, what may seem like the micro issue that they're dealing with right there, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I see much more than that. And in the context of what may be going on, that one little question may not be all that significant. I'm going to answer it through the client, but I also want to give more than that. Uh, yeah. Because again, if I'm getting it, it's for a reason, it's for them. So um, I always want to push it a yeah. little bit. Yeah, well, and there's also um, like, yeah, getting the big picture of stuff. And then sometimes I'll find uh, stuff is just coming through that like my mind, my personality is not really seen. I wouldn't think that about the client if I met them. And then it starts to come through and this question of being like we need to like you said the vessel or the tube or the conduit these words like um like say sometimes i'll get like oh you may be pregnant for a client you know in a couple months and and i have to really check and double check with all the techniques that we can use because that's like we have to be ethical we can't just randomly say uh you know we have to we have to take ourselves out, take our opinions out, and just check the information in all, you know, you might check with clair clairvoyance or your feeling, all, all the ways. And, um, but yet I also like that word you keep using, allow, I just allow it to come through. Like, it's not for me to judge what the universe is saying. It's just for me to bring it forth and help the client receive it and then yeah 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 and then yeah yeah what well, what else comes up yeah what are you thinking about yeah well when you mentioned the the pregnancy question that you know this idea of when something comes up that may be challenging or difficult for the person um you know that's that's always that's always an interesting dynamic i i had a i had a client who you know in the pre-read it came out that there was definitely infidelity going on you know in her wow. marriage I didn't know if she knew this. Uh, it wasn't clear to me if she knew that. And she knew something was going on, but uh, when we were actually doing the live the live call, you know, I always ask, you know, what are your questions? And you know, she was kind of, ah, I don't really have a specific question, just what's going on. I say, well, let's narrow it down. Well, maybe family. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So, so we talked around that a little bit. I'd seen that she had some kids, and we talked about that, and then we got into the relationship, and I. I was as direct, directly and direct as I could be. I'd say, okay, so what I'm hearing about the relationship is that there's there's more than the two of you involved in, in a way. 
uh, how comfortable are you with going there? Because mm -hmm. since she was kind of sneaking up on the on the whole thing, not really wanting to say anything, then she, but then that kind of like broke it for her that yes. I had seen it. Then she says, "Yeah, let's let's go for it." So um, so I'm, I'm sensitive to that because if someone's taking the step of calling and, yeah. and setting an appointment and they paid already and they want they really want to go there, yeah. so I want to make but I still want to make it a comfortable place to go there that they right. know I'm not judging them. That's why I, in that instance, I felt like that was the right approach with her just to kind of say, okay, this is what I'm seeing. How comfortable are you? And then, she, you know, she just let it, let it go. So. Yeah. That's yeah. I think one thing people, um, you know, I don't know how often people uh, have psychic appointments, but this idea, like after a certain number of readings, you and I have seen and heard it all. Like, nothing is nothing <laughs> is surprising and we don't judge it's like it's not ours to judge it's um it's not ours to even have an opinion and um the, the thing that i kind of find find kind of hard well i think it's because it's the last couple of years too but there has been a like an extraordinary amount of pain in the world and um sometimes digging deep to um, help so many people that might be having difficult situations like that client you just mentioned that's obviously going to cause some pain for that client and uh, world situations and so forth and um, that's where we have to be responsible to keep like we can't just connect to the universe during reading time we have to go and get our own guidance from the universe and do our own practices to keep like that idea of keeping our buckets filled or what cups filled or whatever it is we have to keep um keep the hope coming in so that we can be a steady source for our clients which can be a challenge because we have our lives too so yeah yeah, yeah. no no well stated i mean i my meditation practice is usually every day, usually in the morning. And, you know, sometimes I got to get up and go and I didn't do it in the morning. I feel that. <laughs> I yeah. miss my meditation. I have, to, yeah. I have to let some of that go too. I didn't lose all my connection and everything gone because of that. <laughs> right, right. You know, That's true. You know, I mean, I normalize it to that extent. Like you said, it's just a constant, a constant flow. Um, Cause if I'm not doing that, I'm not going to be as, you know, as effective for my clients if I'm not maintaining that for myself as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, that idea of being focused and like being focused and like with with the gifts, which I do think lots of people have, but knowing that you have the gift, like it brings you have responsibility. If you're going to use them, you have responsibility to um, keep your life organized so that you can be a vessel, I guess, would be the way to think about it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Anything else that comes up for you that you want to mention or take your time? Because sometimes like the most interesting things are like, yeah, I don't even know why I want to say this, but here it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, this idea of, of continuing to grow and develop and, and, and learn what's happening just recently for me, what's been coming through very, very strongly is clairsentience. I've always had a piece of that, but um, I was actually doing a, a workshop recently on mediumship. It was just kind of like a little mediumship circle. And uh, the lady I was I was reading for, I guess it was her great grandmother who came through and there was this intense sadness, almost like I was gonna cry. And I had to tell her this, you know, I had to almost take, take a moment and, you know, it turned out she had like a really involved prolonged passing uh, where she knew what was gonna happen and she just so much unsettled with her. And I was just absorbing all of that. I hadn't felt that that intensely before Five minutes later, since it was a circle, we, we switched to a different person. And the lady who I was reading with, her departed husband came there. He had passed young, but he was very energetic, almost a bullion. And I was just hopping in my seat, just like almost giggling, yeah. giddy. That there was this connection there. And it's like, wow, I had experienced that before. So like you said earlier, I mean, the more you do it, the more you get. And um, that's something that I'd experienced, you know, in, 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 pieces before but not with that much intensity and that's within the last week that, yeah that's so the growth is always occurring yeah. well yeah because um in normal regular mainstream life people often have like their armor on 
you know, just their day to day armor. It doesn't even have to be their heavy duty armor, but everybody's kind of got their facade going on. And in this kind of work, there's no, it, you're just completely open. Yeah. 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 And have you had, I don't even know if I want to go there, but I think it's kind of like, have you had experience with um, having trouble turning it off? Like you go to the mediumship circle and then does it, do the people, the departed come with you or did they, are you seeing them other places or is it, is it like, I, I use a technique of dialing it up and dialing it down. It's like spirits over there, dial it down, not into you right now. Like I'm, not, I'm off the clock, you know, but what do you, what do you do to kind of manage, manage that part? I probably need to do that because I, sometimes I forget, I call it, I left the door open if I don't really yeah, close yeah, out yeah. because I get, I could get in that space where usually late at night before I'm going to go to bed, if I was reading or watching TV before I go to bed, I'm not, I'm, I'm awake, but kind of drifting stuff can happen there. People can come in and yeah. uh, sometimes very powerful things come in, in in that space. And I have to do exactly what you said. I, you know, I call it, I, I forgot to close the door. So I'll just yeah. do like, yeah. I'll, just do a clear, I'll just do a clearing like right yeah. then and there. So yeah, but definitely if I don't remember to do that, you know, I can, I can get this is energetic visitors. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have that um, where we live is, was at one time sort of like a, um, some kind of pathway for people who lived here in the past and um, like a lot of people used to use this trail in the past and now they're departed using the trail at night and so having to set some energetic boundary like thank you i'm sleeping um please you can go a few feet more to the right <laughs> that'll be fine but don't like pass through the bedroom because it's yeah it's just because this stuff is all happening it's just we're taught the linear method it's interesting that you were, did you teach literature or did you teach? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, high school English. I taught grades nine through 12 over. Yeah, uh, because years. like, if you think all those authors, I mean, I don't, as a person that like, like I think creativity and intuition are so hand in hand, like all those authors were probably downloading their own visions and experiences. So even teaching that, um helped you learn that language of symbolism metaphor all the other words that i don't remember what they are but you know <laughs> you, you kind of know that way of like taking a detail and then getting getting the bigger picture from it which is yeah, part of that my, yes you're making connections i hadn't even really <laughs> made yeah me like mind. literature and art and design and music like all of well not music but all literature and art like they're so visual and they all have that symbolism, you know, yeah. wrapped in. And that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. But we're not using a book or an art piece. We're doing it in our third eye. Right. right we're right. receiving it. Yeah. 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 My emphasis was creative writing. And uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, kind of what we were saying earlier, I guess I was being prepared for this all along. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Realizing it. But then in retrospect, you look back and say, oh, it's almost like, of course. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and that was my background too, is creative writing. So I, I, that's, yeah, we learn to think that way and then it's opening up. Well, um, thank you so much for your time. It's been super interesting to talk to you and um, I will put the information of where people can find you and get uh, sessions with you below. But um, thank Great. you, I'm just so honored to be working with you. So oh, to oh, know thank you. you. The honor yeah. is mine. I really enjoyed this. I appreciate this too. This yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's see.